Hey guys, uh, my name is Will. I'm a software engineer at Google. And today I'll be talking about some of the exciting new ways we're adding interactivity uh, to AMP. So uh, we've gone over this a thousand times, but first let's quickly review uh, some of the things we can do in AMP today. Uh, you may be most familiar with AMP pages in Google Mobile Search. Uh, AMP supports rich multimedia content. Uh, through a wide array of AMP components. And there are many different types of AMP content, from mostly static content, like news, um, to dynamic content, like live blogs and ads. Uh, the dozens of uh, AMP components available offer rich but uh, predefined interactivity uh, and within the scope of the individual element. Um, we do also support ways to have interactivity across components uh, with AMP actions. Um, with AMP's custom on attribute, uh, we support a simple way for one AMP component to invoke actions on another AMP component. Um, there are a few events that we support. The uh, most common one is tap. So in this simple example, there's an AMP sidebar uh, with an ID sidebar one and a button with that on attribute, that on tap uh, calls the open action on the sidebar. Um, fairly straightforward. This is a slightly more complex example showing a common use case you may see on the, the web today. We have two image carousels, a large one and a small one, showing thumbnails, where tapping on an image on the smaller carousel updates the display uh, on the larger carousel. Um, so you can see in the code, each image in the smaller carousel has its own action. Uh, where on tap, it calls the go to slide action on the larger carousel with the ID foo um, with the index of the corresponding image. Um, now this method works, but it's not ideal, as you can probably tell, because of the duplication of the action markup. Um, so recently we released a new AMP component called AMP Selector. Now AMP selector, Selector's goal is to make the selecting use case more concise and uh, natural to use. So instead of duplicating uh, the action markup on each image, uh, AMP Selector wraps all the images and has a single action and its own select event, uh, contrasted to the tap event we saw earlier. And each child image uh, is identified with an op option attribute. Um, and then on select, the AMP selector just calls go to slide with the uh, option value of the selected uh, image. Now AMP selector is not constrained to only be used on AMP images. Uh, any child HTML element with an option attribute works, so it's kind of a general abstract uh, a component. Um, and AMP Selector and these actions are all documented on ampproject.org. Yeah, should have tapped that, but moving on. Um, so what about more complex interactivity? Um, something that AMP actions can't support. For example, an e-commerce product page with uh, an interesting matrix of uh, product SKUs. And different SKUs may have different prices or availabilities, um, and you want a dynamic UI that can represent that. Um, well, today you could use uh, AMP iframe, but you know, as we said, it's kind of duct tapey, and you lose a lot of the benefits of AMP. Um, or you can work with us to build a new AMP component, and this has happened in the past, but of course, uh, not the fastest solution. Uh, or, do do do, cue dramatic music. Street Fighter fans, yeah. Yeah. you could use AMP bind. Uh, so, uh, what is it? Uh, AMP bind is a new component that supports custom interactivity um, via data binding and expressions. I just read the slide. Um, 
On the right, you can see a sample that implements the uh, e-commerce product page use case we saw on the last slide. Um, in this case, you're buying apples with different colors and sizes. Uh, so if you suspend disbelief for a second, uh, this, this is actually uh, implemented using AmpBind, and it's uh, available on, the code is available on ampbindexample.com today. So uh, how does it work? Um, there are three main parts, uh, state, binding, and mutation. We'll go through each of those. So the first part is state. Uh, AmpBind introduces a concept of document level JSON mutable state. And it adds a new subcomponent called AMP state, which basically is just a component that wraps JSON data in the DOM. Um, and AMP state initializes this document level data. So in this simple example, we see we have a AMP state element uh, ID foo and wraps a simple JSON object with single key value pair. Uh, bar that maps to the string hello. The second part is binding, which is where AMP bind gets its name from. Uh, binding is aka data binding. Uh, basically, it's just a link between an HTML element and an expression, uh, where the element's property uh, in the square brackets is bound to or updated with the result of the expression. Uh, expressions in AmpBind can also refer to the state. Um, in this example, we have a paragraph element whose text content, or text for short, again in the square brackets, is bound to the expression foo.bar plus baz. Now, if you remember, foo was the ID of the AMP state element on the previous slide. And the third part is uh, mutation, or more specifically, state mutation. So remember I mentioned that AMP Actions uh, is a way to add cross-component interactivity. Um, part of AmpBind is the introduction of this new action, amp.setState, which takes its argument and merges it into the document-level state. Um, so since expressions can reference the state, changing the state changes the resulting value of those expressions, right? And then changing the resulting value of the expressions changes the state of the element that is bound to it. Um, let's put those all together and see what that looks like. Um, so these are just the code snippets from the last three slides put together. Uh, this, here's our simple hello world example for AMP bind. Uh, at the top, the AMP state which again initializes the document level JSON data. In the middle, a paragraph element whose text is bound to an expression foo.bar plus baz. And on the bottom, a button where on tap, it will merge this uh, simple object with a single key value pair baz to the string world into the document level state. So tapping the button, makes the paragraph element say, hello world. So how does this work in the uh, more complex sample e-commerce Apple product page? Uh, well, the product data is stored in the AMP state. So that's uh, what color apples are available um, and what is the price and availability, size availability for each color of apple. Uh, the currently selected color of Apple is stored in a state variable called selected color, which is changed when you tap on the individual color button via amp.setState, and the price label is bound to the expression you see there, product uh, in brackets selected color dot price, which is just a reference, again, to this uh, document level state. And uh, mentioned already, but uh, this code and documentation for this code uh, is on ampbyexample.com. So diving a little bit deeper, um, how do expressions in ampbind work? Well, it's basically uh, a subset of JavaScript. Um, 
with a few caveats to keep things fast and safe. So uh, no loops or custom functions or classes. Um, expressions only have access to the AMP state data, so no globals like window or document. And no modifications of JS internals, so funky stuff like you know, swapping out standard built-in objects and things of that nature. Also no eval or function, function constructor or some of the uh, more crafty things you can do in JS, as we all know. Uh, one cool thing we've added to the expression system is concurrency through web workers. So what that means is heavyweight tasks like expression parsing, uh, evaluation, and validation are performed on a worker thread. Um, this avoids blocking the main thread and introducing Jenk to the UX. Um, so just to address the elephant uh, in the room, uh, the point of AMP-bind expressions is not to re-implement JS. Uh, um, we wanted to make the syntax familiar to web developers um, and focus on keeping it lightweight, fast, and on the use case of building cool interactivity within the scope of a single AMP page, rather than, say, the next great JS web app framework. Um, that being said, check out how cool it is. Uh, so uh, Turing completeness, which is in the title of this talk, a little clickbaity, I know, uh, is basically an academic measurement of uh, expressiveness or powerfulness of a programming language. Um, so AMP bind being Turing complete means theoretically, academically, it can be as powerful as other programming languages who are, which are uh, Turing complete, which are most languages. Um, and the way you can prove that is by uh, simulating a Turing machine, uh, which is the thing on the right there. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah, each gray bubble, the line of gray bubbles is the tape of a Turing machine, and the colored cell is the current head of the Turing machine. And uh, clicking the step button is the crank that advances the head of the train machine and processes the next instruction and, and, and so on. Uh, so the way that uh, it works is uh, we um, encoded the state of the train machine uh, via the AMP state component, and step uses amp.setState to advance the, the head of the train machine and process the next instruction. Now, that being said, please don't actually do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, some more cool technical details. Uh, concurrency via web worker, like I mentioned. Uh, we amortize the initialization cost of AMP bind. I mean, it's looking up all the bindings in the DOM uh, with request idle callback, make sure that we don't introduce jank again. Uh, abstract syntax trees and evaluation results are cached. And it's to be deter determined, but uh, we're, we're investigating reasonable performance constraints on the, the, the expressions. And again, uh, it's JavaScript uh, light. Uh, bindings are verified by the same logic that we use to validate uh, uh, in the AMP validator. And we also sanitize the results of expressions at runtime. Um, the main point is that um, we focused on making things fast and safe and really making sure that AMP bind lives up to the principles of AMP. That's fast, uh, safe, and user-friendly. Uh, so what else can you do with AMP bind? Um, the first item we've kind of already covered with the Apple product demo, uh, which I think personally is a very exciting new uh, area for AMP. Um, Next, we know that AMP Actions already prefer, uh, offers some cross-component interactivity, but I think AMP Bind really takes it to the next step because you can also uh, mutate text content and, and CSS. But I think there are also many more applications, you know, including things that we haven't thought of. We're really excited to, to see what you guys come up with. So uh, AMP Bind is available today uh, in Experimental. 
And we're currently working on making it uh, even faster and more useful with uh, deeper integrations in existing AMP components uh, and better documentation. And uh, we'd really appreciate feedback. Um, th things you love, things you hate, and everything in between. Yeah, that's a bit of a stretch, but I couldn't resist. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, fans, okay, Street Fighter, all right, all right that, that's the last one. Uh, and uh, just for funsies, uh, I made a miniature clone of the popular game 2048 uh, using AmpBind. This basically works by encoding the state of this two by two grid with a 2D array uh, in the AMP state and really abusing the ternary operator. Uh, that's why I'm not showing any code on this slide. <laughs> uh, but please, like, look at this, like, you know, the people that built a calculator in Minecraft. Um, don't, it's like shows, shows some of the cool stuff you can do, but maybe not a real world use case. Um, that being said, I think Ambine is expanding the horizon of possibilities with AMP, so um, please check it out. I think I have a lot of time left. Thank you, guys.